Welcome to today's webinar, The Secret to Improving Your Leadership. Really? Sponsored by the MEP National Network. I'm Dr. Sharm, Editor-in-Chief for Quality Digest, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. So why do so few leadership improvement efforts produce the results that leaders and business sponsors want? What's in the way? Well, today we will discuss a process that will help any organization improve their leaders. So we're going to discuss a few things. Um, the five common obstacles to leadership improvement and a methodology to overcome them. The importance of vision and what it does for your leadership. Why so many confuse management for leadership and why this matters. We'll also talk about how to improve your workplace resilience and much more as well. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder that you can send us questions using the Q&A box. You can find the Q&A button in the bar at the bottom of your screen. If you just mouse down, you'll see that Q&A, uh, you'll see a little menu pop up and there's a Q&A button on there. Click that and you can send your questions to us as you think of them and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. A recording of this webinar will be available one day after the webinar. You will get an email with that information from Quality Digest. And important, if you requested a certificate of attendance for this webinar, you will need to answer at least one of the polling questions presented during the webinar. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's get started. Today's presenter is Keith Gamow, Manager of Client Services at Arkansas Manufacturing Solutions, part of the MEP National Network. Keith is a 20-year veteran of industry. As a manager of client services, his focus includes training, facilitating, and coaching in the areas of leadership development, lean manufacturing, and quality systems excellence. Prior to joining Arkansas Manufacturing Solutions, Keith spent five years in the wood industry and the balance of his career in plastics processing and packaging. He is a two-time graduate of Arkansas State University and holds Bachelor of Science degrees in leadership management and industrial technology. Uh, okay, Keith, it's all yours. Sure, thank you. So I'll start with thank you to Quality Digest for hosting today. Thank you for the NEP National Network for all that you do and allowing us the space to do this. So as Dirk shared, the title of the webinar is The Secret to Improving Your Leadership, dot, 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 really. Subtext, how to overcome five common obstacles of transformational improvement. Are there more than five? Of course there are. We're gonna to talk today about five of those. I find myself today in an unenviable spot. So in Arkansas where I'm at, it's one o'clock and in the East Coast a little later, this is typically a sleepy time of the day. So I consider it a challenge to keep everyone on that's tuned in today, uh, engaged and interested and challenge accepted here. So here's where we're going. We're gonna talk about the five obstacles, the transformational leadership improvement, the improvement path, which is really the engine that drives this process. We're gonna spend a little time comparing and contrasting leaders and managers. And then we're gonna look at the TLI process through the fictional lens uh, of, a, of a lady named Fran, a frontline leader who represents very real uh, frontline leaders and others that I've worked with over the years out there. So Dirk gave you my bio. I spent 21 years in industry before joining this team. And the way I describe it is I came to work for the NDP uh, via Arkansas Manufacturing Solutions almost eight years ago. And I haven't worked a day since then because I love what I do so much. It doesn't feel like work. So I work exclusively in the state of Arkansas with the leaders. I uh, like many of you who are joining today, and it is a labor of love. I'm a part of this federal program called the MEP, which stands for Manufacturing Extension Partnership, and it is a partnership. So our focus is on partnering with uh, entities within our state and with each other across the network. You can see we've got an MEP center uh, and multiples in some of the larger states in every state in the union, including Alaska, also Puerto Rico, uh, and Hawaii there. And you can see us, everyone's kind of looking for your state. We're here in the center in Arkansas, AEDC Manufacturing Solutions. So here's the question, and Dirk posed this in the intro. Why do so few improvement efforts, and we're talking specifically today about leadership, but you can really apply any kind of improvement activity to the question, why do so few improvement efforts produce the desired results? Now implicit in this question is another assumption, and that assumption is few improvement activities do produce the results that we're really after. Business sponsors are those people who are paying the checks and that want the work done. And then us leaders are the ones trying to bring about the change, bring about those results. So here's the question, what's in the way? 
And so this is a poll question. So this is where Dirk will pull that up. Okay, give me one second here. Launch, there we go, that's what I was looking for. All right, uh, you all should be seeing, that's the right question, right? Yeah, there we go. If y'all just take a minute to, uh, to answer that poll, that'd be, that'd be great. And uh, I'll show the I'll show the results here in just a little bit. But uh, lack of commitment from leadership is in the lead. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Big surprise! Big surprise! All right, I'll give you all give you all another 30, 30 seconds or so to do that. Oh, interesting results. Okay, interesting. All right. Okay, it's pretty much stable here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and uh, and end this. We got a couple more poll questions that'll come. Oh, let, uh, let me. Yeah, y'all still. Okay, there we go. All right, let's show the results of this here and share the results. There you go. All right. So lack of commitment from leadership, sixty percent, and that looks like a bunch of also rands, right? Unclear objectives for development. Okay. And, you know, we could add another 10 to this list, couldn't we? So there, it's a target-rich environment when it comes to what's in the way. So thank you guys for participating in that. I'm going to close that out on my end and move on here. Um, so more on what I saw as in the way and, and good responses there here in, in a couple of slides. But before we get to that, uh, I mentioned transformation in the subtext of, of the webinar and also on the slide. We're talking about transformational improvement and that can be kind of a heavy word that can be kind of scary or feel kind of kind of intimidating so the question is why are we interested in transformational improvement why do we need transformational improvement so to sort of point that uh put that in the spotlight here does this sound familiar high turnover just think about your frame of reference as a leader in industry or wherever you're tuning in or working with those in those spaces inability to fill open positions excessive absenteeism, low workforce engagement, and inability to grow or even satisfy current demand. So as we're interfacing with leaders in our state, this is the story that we're hearing over and over and over again. You hear about the great resignation. Everyone that's tuned in, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what's going on with the workforce and labor shortages and things like this. Recently on, uh, so in our MEP program, we have a work, different working groups. One of them is focused on workforce and one of the team members shared these stats. Nationally, millennials and Gen Zs are set to inherit $48 trillion from their parents. Now this is information shared at the 2021 Sherman Conference, 48 trillion. What's that gonna do to those who are near or able to retire from that? It's gonna incent them to leave the workforce, which makes things worse. The current quit rate is 46% nationally almost 70 percent six percent in manufacturing in the space that we play in within the first 30 days the cost to onboard to hire and onboard a new team member and this is just joe or jane team member seventeen hundred dollars when the employee quits within the first week that jumps to three thousand and if they quit on day 31 that jumps to almost five thousand so the question i ask is why do we need transformational improvement and the answer is because there is no calvary company there is no short-term solution inside for this workforce, this worker gap, this shortage that we're experiencing as you project out over the next 10 years, it actually gets worse. So this brings us to the obstacles of what's in the way of transformational improvement. So really quickly, let me show you what I was experiencing in the space that I'm working in in leadership development with Arkansas clients. I would engage with a, a plant leader and uh, you know we, we promoted these people, we haven't trained them on leadership, we need to do some stuff in this space. We, we, we're failing, you know, we, we haven't supported our team, team leaders. So, you know, we would frame, frame up a scope of work. Uh, I would bring in best in class stuff that I like to use um, and bring the heat. I've been given high marks for presentation skills and things like that in that space. And that, you know, everyone would show up in the first training, they'd be excited. It's something new, right? And I'd ask them, why are you here? What's the common answer? And anybody that has a mic can chime in. What's the typical reason when you ask why you're here for training? What's the answer? The boss told us to be here, right? <laughs> Dirk told us to be here. We, we work for Quality Digest. Dirk told me to be here, right? Right. That's, 
that's the common response. And then, you know, I, we would, you know, I'd keep it interesting, keep it engaging, mix up small groups and larger groups and video and different things. And at the end of the module, end of that training, I'd assign skills practice, also known as homework. Next module, they would come back, I'd say, hey, how'd that go? And then what would happen? What's happening right now? Crickets chirping, right? Crickets, right, right, right. Nothing. No, <laughs> no one's making eye contact. Usually there's one smart kid in the class like Dirk who did their homework. Yeah. They did their skills practice and everybody was like, oh, thank God. Dirk did the homework, now the pressure's off of us. At the end of that session, I'd assign more skills practice with the admonishment, hey, I'm a guitar guy, so I use guitar references. You can't learn to play the guitar by watching a YouTube video. You have to put your hands on the instrument at some point. So do that skills practice stuff. Next module, we'd roll around a few weeks later, third module. Hey, how did the skills practice go? What was the response? Still the same? Crickets <laughs> chirping, right? Third module, fourth module. And then, you know, the next engagement, the next client, I, I, I endeavored, I'm going to be even more energetic. I'm going to be even more enthusiastic. I'm going to bring more excellence to this thing, and we're going to get a different result. Pretty much the same thing would happen. And finally, after this had happened for a while, I sat down in the morning with my cup of Starbucks when my mind was fresh in that wide space for me early in the morning, and I said, something needs to change, something's in the way. And this, this is what I came up with. This is what I think are five common obstacles to getting the kind of transformational improvement that we're all after for our leadership. Number one, the absence of learning tension and support. Learning tension happens whenever the sponsor, the manager sits down with someone going through a process and said, hey, we're getting ready to do this. Here's how this connects to our strategies for the organization. This is how it connects to what's important right for this year this is how it connects to what's important for you and this is how i expect you to show up i need you to be there on time i need you to leave your laptop back at the office right have your phone in your pocket be fully engaged in those sessions do the in-between session work right engage me as needed and by the way what are you going to need from me understanding that this is going to take time away from the day job and focusing on the whirlwind on the business what kind of support do you need now when you have that kind of conversation with your leader that's a different kind of thing going on in here, isn't it? Then, hey, be there next Tuesday. We've got somebody coming in from PMS to do training. So we were missing it right out of the gate. We were not establishing this learning tension and identifying the support needs. So that's obstacle number one. Number two, no frame of reference for what to improve. Leadership is this big, fuzzy, abstract thing. There's been tons and tons and tons of books written on it. If you Google leadership, you're going to get a billion hits, right? So there's tons of information already in this space out there. But when it comes to actually improving your leadership, what do you work on, right? We weren't giving leaders handles to be able to pick their leadership up and move it forward in a, in a concrete, specific way. Obstacle number three, no context for why improvement is needed. Now, two leaders show up in this space. The first is a minority. And that leader is, you know what, I'm pretty good the way I am. You know, I got promoted, must be doing something right. Why change? That's a, that's a minority, right? Those are few and far between. The other facet of leader here that's showing up is, you know what, I'm trading in my time and energy, this little narrow slice, if I have any bandwidth, to do proactive things like this for the sake of what's happening in the business, what's happening in the day job. So why would I give up that time? So we weren't making the value proposition for the leader, the business case for why they would want to do this instead of focusing on what's happening now in the business. Obstacle number four, the fear and insecurity of using new tools and approaches. And maybe as, as leaders and maybe for some of the guys out there on, on, you know, we don't like to think about ourselves as being afraid or being insecure. But if you think about it, we get used to being the voice of expert, right? For our team that we're leading, we know more about the process. We know more about the business. We know more typically about the product. And that's what got us promoted. So when we start pulling these new tools off and we start trying these new approaches, there's a vulnerability in that, isn't there? Perhaps an insecurity or a reticence to try something new because now I may not be showing up as the voice expert for that team. So we have to overcome that fear and insecurity of using those new tools and approaches. And finally, probably for me, the most important one, trying to focus on too many things at one time. That whirlwind, that day job is there, it's the business, it won't go away, it can't because it's the business. So with that little tiny narrow slice of time that we do have, we have to be strategic about what we're doing with it. And even in the context of leadership development, we try to focus on too many things. We go through training and in each one of the modules, if we're doing multiples, there may be 50 concepts or 50 ideas of things that you can apply in each one of those, right? 
So it ends up being a dilution of attention and dilution of, of effort. So we've got to overcome that obstacle. Quick quote from Winston Churchill, uh, which I think is powerful. I use this in the uh, cultural planning and strategic planning space when I'm doing that with companies. We shape our buildings there after they shape us. And for me, this is about habit. Organizational, or in the case, in the context of our leadership, the habits, right? When you start something new, you don't, you don't know how to do it. You're just figuring it out. In the case of your leadership, you do things wrong. Oh, oh man, that, that ended me up in HR. I, you know, I don't want to do that again. Or, oh, that team member quit over there. Or something good happened, something bad happened. And we just figure out. We figure out what works and we figure out what doesn't work. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing that our brain has that capability because now we can turn things over and scale our leadership. But here's the problem. The problem is we no longer see choice points. We no longer see when we reach a choice point where we could do something different. We just blow right by those choice points and we go off of muscle memory and habit. And then it becomes a problem because then it's a barrier to change. So part of my role uh, working with leaders in this, this a uh, process we're talking about is to bring new awareness to the leader so we can be more strategic. So we're going to set goals and then we're going to see these choice points for what they are and we can be more intentional and more choiceful. Now you can see in the subtext at the bottom down there, this is this improvement path model, which is really the engine. It's based on uh, a body of work by Mike Rother. And some of you on, probably many of you on the webinar know who Mike Rother is. He wrote the book Toyota Kata and he studied Toyota and he codified basically the improvement energy our, our engine, excuse me, that basically created all those tools that we were copying. We were copying the tools and what we couldn't see is this improvement engine. He called it Kata. And we're applying this now to this, this space of leadership improvement. And it starts with the zero step vision. If you think about it, anything that's ever been achieved, accomplished, developed, created, has started with this vision. And everyone has it. Everyone has vision. If you've ever been on vacation, you've got vision because in those Weeks leading up to the beach trip, you're thinking about it, aren't you? You're bringing that future to life in your mind, right? What could be and what should be is me in a beach chair with the umbrella, with my cooler full of favorite beverages and a book and that cool ocean breeze blowing over me. Well, that's vision, right? And that's the zero step. That's where everything that's ever been done, accomplished or created starts. And that's also applies for your leadership. Typically that happens in a planning process. Next in the improvement path is a challenge theme. A challenge theme is now going towards that vision, which you can think of as a compass heading. In this case, for your leadership, where can I be in about 12 months, 12 to 18 months? Typically those challenge themes are set uh, in a goal setting kind of process. And when we have these two things for the organization or for our leadership, we have a really important thing. We have direction. Now we're iterating towards a specific direction because if you aim for nothing, you're sure to hit it, right? So we wanna get that direction that beyond the horizon compass heading and then that midpoint at the horizon goals, that's the challenge theme. Now, relative to those, to that challenge theme, we're gonna step back and we're gonna define, we're gonna quantify where we're at. And again, we're applying this specifically to our leadership right now. That's a current condition. Typically that'll happen through some type of assessment process. So I use 360 assessments for that. There's a tons of different tools. Uh, in leadership space, you can do those organizationally with different assessment tools that we offer in our state and other MEP centers offer as well, those types of assessments to quantify that current condition, that current state relative to our challenge theme. Now, when we have these three things, now this is not Mike, this is the gospel according to Gamble, if you will, you have what I call healthy tension. Healthy tension is whenever, it's as if you have stretched a rubber band from where you're at into the future. Now you have this sense of something that's compelling you forward in a prescribed direction. And you've been in organizations that didn't have this, it was missing, but you didn't know what it was because this is how it showed up. You just went into work every day and you jumped up on the hamster wheel and you started running as fast as you could and there was no sense of direction, momentum, movement, or accomplishment. And it's because these components were missing. Now that we have this, we can't take that step all the way to our challenge theme in one step. If we have, if we can, and we didn't reach far enough out there for a 12 month challenge, did we? So we're gonna set a short-term goal. Mike would call that a target condition. That short-term goal is about four weeks out there that's taking us towards that challenge theme. Now what happens whenever we set a short-term goal between where we're at right now and that short-term goal, something will naturally pop up or come into view for us. And what that is are obstacles. We know those obstacles exist. If they didn't, we would already be at that target condition, wouldn't we? 
So this is where we typically start organizational improvement or leadership improvement. We start in the obstacle cloud, right? We just pick something and we start working on it because it's a target rich environment. There's a bunch of, bunch of things out there that could be, could be and perhaps should be better. But what's a better way? Is that the best use of your organizational time and energy? Is that the best way to focus those limited resources? I've heard them called those three T's, the time, treasure, and talent, right? And then what's even worse is if we start with a tool. Typically what we'll do is pull tools out to side, overcome these obstacles, but sometimes we start right in the middle of this with the tool. Hey, I just read this book by Lynn Choney or by John Maxwell or by somebody. Let's go do that thing, right? Or let's go do 5S because we did it at the plant down the street and I know how to do it or whatever. That's the worst case is to start with the tool, right? But what we really want to do is be clear. We want to be clear and only work on those obstacles that are on the most direct path between us and those short-term goals, right? So having the target condition, the short-term goal, knowing where we're at helps us to do that. When we reach that short-term goal, that target condition, that really becomes our new current condition. So what do we do then? We set a new short-term goal. And then when we reach that, when we set a new short-term goal, and as you can see, these two gray lines here mean, hey, when you reach that challenge theme, first celebrate and celebrate all along the way. Celebrate yourself and your leadership or for your organization, however you're applying this. And then those two gray lines mean, hey, everything to the left here, it's lather, rinse, and repeat. Do it over and over and over again, iteratively taking you all the time closer towards your vision theme. So now we're going to start to transition a little bit. We're going to start talking about these two functions inside of that, leadership and management. So this is a quote by Yogi Berra. Some of you uh, with gray hair like me know who Yogi is. Some of you may have never heard of him, but he, he had all these funny sayings and one of them attributed to him at least was we're lost, but we're making good time. And this puts me in the mind of this management school chestnut, right? The MBA program, they tell this, this old chestnut, this story about a leader and a manager. The leader and the manager are in the jungle, they're hacking away. Many of you have heard this, right? Finally, the leader, they're at this for days. They got machetes, they're hacking through the jungle. For days, so I mean the leader climbs the tree, looks around, comes back down. Manager's never even looked up, right? And the leader says, we're in the wrong jungle. And Dirk, what does the manager say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they didn't teach you this in MBA school? No, they did not. <laughs> the manager says, but we're making good time. <laughs> so this is going to start to... Uh, bring us into this leadership and, and I have leaders and managers but for now let's say leadership versus management and so Dirk which is best leader or manager well I'd say leadership okay is there a difference between a leader and a manager well until you asked it um, I would have said no but I see where you're going with this yeah I mean yeah a, a, a leader, a leader, I mean, just talking off the top of my head here, I mean, a leader is leading, you know, I mean, it, it, he's got a vision, he's got, he's got a direction he's going, whereas manage is kind of, kind of the, I don't know, I guess in, in my mind, kind of the day-to-day -day operations and not necessarily focused on where the goal is. So good response, good thinking on that. And so which is best? Uh, I think we get it confused. I think it's a confusing topic and it doesn't have to be. We use them interchangeably and I think many people think, hey, we need leaders, right? Uh, what about the managers? Which is best? I think if we think about them as a role or as, um, you know, a job description or as a role then or as a person, we, we get confused. Which is better? What, you know, what do we want for the organization? This is a big idea. So I've been talking for a minute, so I'm getting ready to drop a mind bomb on you here. So come back. What if we think about them as functions? What if we think about leadership and management as functions? Let's play around with that for just a second. So what are the functions of leadership? First of all, let's look at the focus. Leadership is about coping with and in fact, initiating change. It tends to be longer term and it will always, leaders will always be people focused because we don't lead machines, do we? We don't lead processes, we lead people. Management functions, coping with complexity, bringing order to the chaos, right? We want things to, to run smoothly and efficiently. More day-to-day, -day, as you said, Dirk, and more focused on things and stuff, but also to a degree, people. So my question is, Dirk, which is best, leader or manager? 
Yeah. I'm not sure. Let's let's look at a few more. Leadership functions, vision and direction, establishing and casting vision for the organization to take it into that new direction. Okay. Management, executing a plan project with efficiency and effectiveness. Now, which is better, a leader or manager? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if you're, if you ask me right now, I'd say it just depends what you're trying to do at the moment. Good. Let's look at a couple more leadership functions, inspire and motivate, getting people to want to move in that new direction and follow the vision. Leadership is about going somewhere, isn't it? Right? Because yeah. if you're not, I mean, just think about lead. Lead means you're going from where you're at to somewhere different, some better future, you know, this distant place. And oh, by the way, if no one's following you, then you're not leading, you're taking a walk, right? So think about this like the, ha the coach's halftime locker room speech. So that's really a two-parter, isn't it? In the first part, what's the coach talking about? What just happened, right? The first half of the game. Right. And then in the second part, what is that? Coach is talking about the second half, what they're going to do. Hey, we're going to have the what ball. What they're going to do, sure, more, okay, yeah. Yeah, we're, more possessions, we're going to move it down the field further, more often into the end zone more. We're going to have more points on the scoreboard at the end of the game. We're going to win. We're going to go to Disney World. That's a vision speech, right? So think about that. What about on the management side? The coach sends in the play during the game in the second half. Now, which is better, leader or manager? It's both, isn't it? You know, actually, it's funny. Uh, just as you were as you were asking that, a couple of people chimed in on on the Q and A. Um, Beth says you need both, um, and then and then Tina says I want a manager with great leadership skills. So we're thinking about them again as roles or people, but if we think about them as functions, I agree it's both of those things, right? So we're going to blow through the rest of these. Creating the right org structure is a leader function, right? To take us to that future vision. Management and getting those open positions filled, both important functions. Challenging the status quo, process and people with about innovation and change on the leader side. Meeting those daily production goals within existing processes. It's a management function, important. And finally, leadership functions, meeting the needs of the person. These are the human felt needs that we all bring into these interactions with each other to be heard and understood to know our thoughts and ideas are valued, to feel respected, to be involved, to be supported and trusted, have our self-esteem maintained and so on. So as leaders, we can ignore these, but we do that to our peril because these are the human condition. These are all needs that we bring into interactions and we have to pay attention to that stuff so that we can get to that get or done stuff, which we're all commissioned as leaders to do to bring results, meeting the needs of the process, Budget, process parameters, procuring supplies, maintaining equipment, etc. So that's all stuff happening on the other side. So from this point forward, it's not an either or. It's not necessarily an either or. We can think about it as a both in. And depending on where we're at in the hierarchy in the organization, we may be doing more focus more on one side or the other. But my question to leaders day in and day out as I talk about this is where do we tend to hang out? More on that right side is the typical answer, right? right? More on that right side because that's the stuff that got us promoted, right? And there's management development programs out there and I'm not knocking them because we need good managers. We need those management functions that are really important to the health of our businesses. But this is the space we're talking about. This is a leadership development process. So where we're going to focus on in the journey is that stuff over on the left side. So where's our focus? So Dirk, I'm going to bring this this uh, this in, and I want you to just pretend with me for a minute. I can't see this. They're brown things. If you'll just take a minute to bring those to life for me in a way that I can, you know, this is for you to practice your vision casting here. Just describe this in vivid detail. Will you play along? Sure. Okay. So these are brown. That's all I know about them is they're brown. So what do they look like? Um, I look. I see like upside down chess pieces. Chess pieces. Are they all the same? Well, yeah. Like like. Three of them are upside down chess pieces and two of them are right side up chess pieces. Like, so there's five yeah. of them. <laughs> and there's and five of them. they're brown. I heard they were brown. What, are they dark brown, light brown? Well, they look black brown. to me on my screen. Okay, so they're black. Are they shiny? If you're picking out wall paint, is this a satin or an eggshell or a flat? Oh yeah, it looked like, like satin. Uh, yeah, like, like kind of a satin finish on these, these chess pieces, yeah. Okay, okay. And so are they tall and skinny or short and fat? 
Oh, uh, tall and uh, tall and skinny. Um, with a, three of them are like wide at the top, and um, they're all skinny at the bottom. Oh, <laughs> there's people. There's people. Some, there's some people chatting in saying they are sending in the Q and A saying they see something different. That's interesting. What do you see, Derek? What else do you see? Um, so, uh, well, I'll, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, and I got, I got a tip off here just because of what somebody said. Now I'm looking in between the pieces and now I'm seeing, looks like people standing. Okay. And Dirk, now we've been talking about this a minute. If we weren't a little tight on time, we could probably have gone on a while on this. And we've been at this for a while and you've been talking about these brown things for a long time. And you can think about those brown things like your processes. What right. took you so long to see the people? So you didn't see the people. And why was that? Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a good question. It's 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 kind of perception. It's like what what is the immediate thing that draws your attention, and what then did you I draw your focus attention? on that to and to the exclusion of of seeing maybe a different picture. Yeah, and what did I draw your attention to? Uh, right yeah, well. To me, it was like, as you were asking the questions, it, it was like you were actually causing me anyway to focus on the things I already saw. Yeah. I kept, you kept saying, do you see, you know, what, what's, what's their shape, what's everything? And I kept going back to the initial thing I saw, which was the, the five, you know, black chess pieces. And I, I kept kind of answering your questions with that in mind. And that is because I was the leader of this exercise and you were following my lead. And if you think about those brown things as your processes, I, as the leader, was focusing your attention on those processes. And the more I focused your attention on the processes, what did it get harder and harder to do? See the yeah, people. I mean, I, I think See the if, if you're asking, processes. if I keep considering, if I keep thinking process and I'm not seeing everything around it, the more you're asking me, the more I'm going to be focused on, he wants me to look more and more at these these things, you know, or, or the process, let's call the thing, let's call the chess pieces, the process. Um, I, I think you were kept focusing me on, on that. And that happens, doesn't it? Back at right. the ranch, this is something that we can fall victim to. And what we all have to remember is leadership is about those people between the processes who make them work. So where is your focus, right? So the focus on that management stuff is more on the process stuff. And on the leader side, it's more on those people and both are important, right? So let's look at the TOI process. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in this process of the improvement path to overcome the five obstacles. And we're gonna do this through the fictional lens of Fran here. Some of you may, who may have enough of this gray to recognize who that actually is, right? So we're gonna call this Fran Lee and how we worked with Fran to transform her leadership. And this is another polling question. Why don't more businesses and leaders have clearly defined visions for their organiza organizations and their leadership? So Derek, you can pop up that second polling question. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yep. Let's get it up here. Clear it. There we go. Okay, so there should be another poll question up there. If you all will take a second and answer that. Um, uh, while we're letting people answer this, uh, comment on something that uh, Emmanuel just, just uh, sent us. Um, she said... Uh, referring to maybe what I was doing, uh, is that we lost the big picture. And I think that's really, I think that's really interesting is sometimes we, we get so short-sighted that we don't, we don't stand back and look at the whole, try to in, look at the whole process and interconnected processes other than the thing that maybe is immediately important to us or is, is, is a, a taking our, our initial attention and we lose the big picture. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about there, right? It really is. In fact, in the, the normal deck that I use for this, I have a slide that again goes back to that improvement path model and talks about how important the vision and those challenge themes are because those are what we tether to those are the compass heading and when we're iterating along if we don't have those if we see something off the path dirk that looks like an opportunity we're able to see it for what it actually is and what it really is is a distraction also those things that we run into that are obstacles on the path it helps us to recognize hey we've got to iterate through this if we go off the path it's taking us away from our goals and away from our vision so we got to figure out how to iterate through it so it helps us to know 
what to ignore and what we must work through. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and end this poll and uh, show the results here. Uh, share results, there we go. It seems fluffy, yeah. <laughs> Fluffy. I get that. I get that. I tell my term. this all the time. I get this, and I, I, I own it. You know what? I know this kind of feels fluffy right now. And you know, we're going to talk about values too, and then you're going to wonder if we're going to be braiding each other's hair and singing kumbaya. It does feel fluffy at times, and we don't understand the real hard tack reason, right? That it's so important. So, uh, and then also, Rans, we had in there. It's time consuming. It can be, um, uh, if particularly if it's not facilitated well. And then mindsets that the only large companies do that. I agree with that. I went into that as well. So I'm going to close this out from my end and move okay. on to the importance of vision here. So I don't really have time for this story now. Uh, I'll give you a flyby of it, the importance of vision. Uh, there's a story told by a leader named Andy Stanley, and he tells us in a book called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets about going on vacation with his dad, Charles Stanley. Some of you guys have probably heard of these two. So Charles would take his, his Andy and his sister, uh, on vacation back in those times they had undeveloped beach and Charles would just pull up the pickup and the camper right up on the beach and the first thing he'd do is have Andy and his sister build this pile of coconuts and the reason for that is is because they did not have a reference point there it was undeveloped beach right and Charles knew something uh, he knew that if they got off in the water and they were floating around for a while you know you guys have been on the beach and been in the water and you've done this and you look up in your condo three or four a hundred yards down the, down the way, and you didn't even know that was happening because you were referencing off each other. This is the way it is in our businesses, right? We're out there in that red boat, the USS, uh, whatever your business name is, and we're referencing off each other. And without that vision, we don't know when we're drifting. So that's why it's so important that we have that vision, among other reasons. So now you'll see in these slides, I'm bringing in the, uh, the part of the model, right, that this uh, we're talking about here, the step and then the obstacle that it's intended to overcome. So Fran worked with us to develop her vision and her values. The reason that we work on values is because that's like our operating system. It affects how we experience the world and how the world experiences us. And again, as I shared at the beginning, it's about awareness. We wanna be able to see new decision points and understand how and why we're showing up for our team. What this helps us to do, this step is overcome this obstacle, what to improve. We're starting to bring into focus where we're going so now we can recognize more easily what needs to be improved. Also why it's needed because we have these goals. We have these goals we wanna to iterate towards for our leadership. Challenge is the next step here, the challenge theme. So we work with Fran to develop her expectations, to hear Mike's expectations, the support needs that she had. There's formal tools to do this, but literally it can just be a coffee table conversation. I've got a, an agenda for that meeting um, that I'm glad to share with anybody. This helps overcome the obstacle, that absence of learning tension. Right, so rather than Mike just saying, Fran, be at training next week, Fran met, uh, Mike met with Fran and went through these to set that learning tension for her and also helped her to know what to improve because he had some expectations for that process as well. And then she set some midterm goals. I have a coaching workbook that I developed that's nothing fancy for this that just kind of mirrors the process. And this step helps overcome the obstacle, what to improve, because now Fran has context. We started to build the value proposition for Fran for why she would trade in time and energy to work on this stuff, because she has goals that she's trying to reach. And then why it's needed is to reach those goals. Now, step two in, this, in the improvement path model, uh, we're gonna develop a current condition. Where are you at right now? We can do that organizationally with a tool called a leadership needs analysis that helps us to know what needs most improvement as an organization, how we're showing up as leaders. And we can do that for individuals by developing a competency model. These are the competencies, the key actions that a leader needs to be successful in this role. This helps us to know what to focus on to improve. It's those key actions inside of those competencies. And then, Fran, we went through a process of 360 feedback. 360 feedback, you have to be organizationally ready for that, right? Uh, it's got some cons, but a lot of pros, but we went through a process of Fran inviting feedback from people all around her. And what that allowed us to do was set a baseline for where she was, that current condition, and know what to improve on. And then we set some short-term goals. We worked with Fran to develop what are the three key actions or the three areas that you want to focus on that are strengths, Fran, that you want to leverage for the benefit of your team, your leadership, and the business? And what are some areas of improvement that were lower rated? This helps her know why improvement is needed, again, so that she can overcome these obstacles and reach these goals. It also helps Fran overcome focusing on too many things at once because we're only going to work on one of these at a time. 
We're only going to pick one of these to work on at a time. Next, going back to that circle diagram, that improvement path, we've got this cloud of obstacles. And what Fran did was she brainstormed a list of obstacles that were in the way of her goal. And you can see on the list here, I don't know how big this is on your monitor, how that's coming in for you, but this was her brainstorm list. She wanted to work on uh, her engagement and involvement score. So what was in the way, Fran? She said, well, my desire to be the expert, right? I like to be able to give the answer. It gives me a little shot of dopamine to know. Lack of experience of my team. I can't send in the play. I got to, you know, I can't, you know, uh, trust them yet, right? To quarterback the play. I got to keep sending it in because they're new, they're inexperienced. And finally, I'm unfamiliar with the tools, the discussion planner. So I invited Fran to pick only one of these to work on. She picked, hey, I'm not familiar with the discussion planner. It's a tool that's going to help me have more successful interactions. This helped Fran avoid focusing on too many things. Then Fran planned experiments, these little experiments to work on those obstacles that are in her path. And then again, I know I've been talking for a minute. This is mind bomb number two or three or whatever it is. What if, what if we reframed our thinking around trying new things? Instead of thinking about it as a pass or a fail or a success or a failure, which those are real things. Success and failure are real things, aren't they? But what if we started thinking about them as experiments? Just an experiment. So what's the goal, Dirk, of an experiment? Uh, to try stuff out and see what kind of results you get. Yep. It's to learn, isn't it? The goal yeah. of an experiment is to learn. It's not about success or failure because there's only one failure mode in an experiment. Only one failure mode, and that is to not do the experiment, right? Right. Anything other than that is a success because the goal is to learn. Maybe you can learn what to cross off the list. That didn't work. We know not to do that, right? right. Or, you know what, that worked and let's build on it. So what if we just did experiments? And Fran planned an experiment uh, to overcome this obstacle of unfamiliar with the discussion planner. She wanted to have a proactive coaching conversation with Joe Smith. And what did she expect? So this is the PDCA part of this. This is the engine that, you know, carries you forward in the improvement. What did she expect for to get better at using the discussion planner and find out how Joe felt about the change over. So we, we developed that in the coaching cycle and then Fran went out, right? What happened? Well, I prepared a discussion planner and had a conversation with Joe. Well, Fran, what happened? Well, the discussion planner helped me stay focused and on track. And I also found out Joe was uncomfortable about doing the changeover without some help. And then we're gonna plan another experiment based on what happened and what we learned. So it's an iterative process. The path manifests itself based on what we're learning how we're overcoming those obstacles, working towards those goals. Next step is Fran wanted to do a reactive coaching conversation using the discussion planner. She's still trying to overcome that obstacle because she's not there yet. And then what did she expect to find out how the changeover went from Joe's perspective and get better at using the discussion planner? What obstacle does this overcome? Fear and insecurity. It's no longer about succeeding or failing or doing it right or doing it wrong. It's about learning. We're just playing around. We're experimenting. We're learning stuff. And also it helps to avoid focusing on too many things because we're doing one obstacle, one experiment at a time. And you can see at the bottom here, it's lather, rinse, and repeat. So this is the process in some develop that long-term vision. That's a zero step. It happens once or once in a great while. Establish those 12 to 18 month goals. That's your challenge theme. Define your current state relative to that. Set those short-term goals. Identify obstacles and plan those little experiments to overcome the obstacles all with coaching support and feedback. Now, I'm a little tight on time. I'm gonna quickly say, those of you who are uh, from the 80s era like me recognize what this is. This is an Atari 2600 gaming console. One of the cool <laughs> things about that was, <laughs> dating myself, was it did something that we take for granted now. Because you could be playing Pac-Man, you could pop that cartridge out, you could pop in another one, now you're playing Pitfall on the same console. And that's the way it is, because in this process, it's not about the tool, it's about the process. You can pull any tool in, any kind of training methodology, any tool that's specific to the obstacles you're trying to overcome in your in your business context. It's about the process. So next polling question, what do you see as the biggest obstacle to implementing a process like transformational leadership improvement in your organization? All right, give, give me a second here. There we go. And you should see a poll, should see a poll coming up. Um, so while this one's going on, let me, let me throw a question at you that came in from, uh, well, more of a statement that came in from Barbara. She said, a lot of leaders think they have a clear vision, but they don't. 
So in the example you were given with Fran, Fran kind of knew that she needed to work on stuff. But what do you deal with it when you have somebody who's a leader and they think they know what they're doing, but they really don't? <laughs> well, this is a whole other thing we could get into. Now you're talking about what, what comes up for me, Dirk, and whoever the question was from is confidence. And confidence is a different thing because everyone has vision. Vision is simply a compelling mental picture of what could be and should be that's future oriented, right? Just like going on vacation, you're planning that vacation. So if you have a clear mental picture of what could be and should be for your organization or for your leadership, let's say five years or more down the road, you have vision. Now, whether or not that's a good vision or whether or not everyone else buys into that, that's like a different thing and how, how we cast that, how we include people and collaborate and things like that. Yeah, no, oh, interesting. Um, okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and end this poll here. Show okay. the results. And there you go. Okay. Time, man, that's real, isn't it? That is real. Everyone here is so busy, so all the more reason, right, to be more searchful, more strategic in what we take on. So I, I think the process, and I hope you all agree, does a good job, and that's a big part of what's aimed at, is being more intentional, right? More intentional about where you want to go and only picking off the things that you need to work on at that time, right time. Purpose-driven activity, right thing at the right time. So just before we move into the formal Q&A part of this, I want to ask the question, uh, so I've given you a roadmap. Can you take this and run? For sure. And I hope everyone out there does it. Um, and do you need a coach? So to, to answer that question, you know, as a communicator, I'm always looking for content, just like a bunch of you out there. When I was in Disney World years ago with my family, I saw this shirt and I knew I was going to use it. So I took a picture of this. And the question is, do I really need a coach to improve my leadership? So if you guys want to play along and take a few minutes, you're welcome to do this. I'm going to kind of fast forward through this, but you could literally draw Darth Vader just from these panels, right? So panel one, start with a head and body. You, could, you guys could do that, right? Yeah, Some of yeah. you are sketching that out. The artist, Dirk, you know, <laughs> Dirk's working on it right now. So far, so good, no problem, right? I can do the head, I can do the bottom body here. Next panel, add a cape. Right? Throw that cape on back there. It's starting to look like Darth Vader, isn't it? sense of self-esteem, self-efficacy is going up. Step three, I am the next Picasso. Add the, draw the face, the gloves, and the boots. No problem. Slam dunk. Finally. <laughs> Add details and some shading. Yeah. Finished. No problem, right? Yeah. This is the way it is. I think this shirt perfectly illustrates how it is for us in business. We can read books, we can attend webinars, we can get the, the map to the top of Mount Everest, right? Here's the different stage camps, here's how you get to the top. At some point though in our journeys, most of the time we realize that we're trying to get from panel three to panel four on the Darth Vader, how to draw a Darth Vader shirt. And that's where the coaches come in. And the good news is there's a network of over 1400 professionals and 450 centers in the United States to help you guys with that. So on that slide that I just showed, that showed you there, there's a link for how you can find us in Arkansas and how you can get into the MEPs uh, in the rest of the centers in, in, in the country. Very so, good, very, uh, we'll, 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 we can take some questions now. Uh, so um, send your questions. If you get questions right now, now's the time to ask them. If you haven't already, uh, just mouse down towards the bottom screen, you'll see the Q&A button, click the Q&A button, send your questions. Um, I want to, uh, Edward, uh, Eduardo uh, said something that really ties in, I think, to that, uh, uh, that Darth Vader thing. The problem is that leaders start with the end product without the planning. And to me, if you, if you think of that Darth Vader thing, that's kind of the thing. It's like, I, I, this is what I want it to look, at, look like with all the shading and, you know, it's all perfectly done. And then the planning part of it, everything leading up to that is kind of ad hoc and kind of spaghetti at the wall, expecting that at the end, you're going to get this perfectly rendered picture of, of Darth Vader, right? Um, I, I kind of see where Ed Eduardo's coming from with that. So, so Ed, thank you for joining. That's an Arkansas, uh, one of my uh, Arkansas constituents there. So thank you for joining and thank you for the question. And that's what I think is so powerful. And again, I'm 
not taken credit for it. This is Mike Rother codifying, you know, what he saw at Toyota. That's why I think this improvement engine is so powerful because the real charge, the real goal is to get what we want for the business or for our leadership in clear focus. And then it's an iterative process. The way we used to do uh, value stream mapping, in, you know, in the lean world in the space, you know, that I play in years ago was we would develop a future state based on where we're at in the current state. And there was this, this big long list of all the things you had to do to get there. Now, how, now Dirk and Ed, how long was that list valid? How long was it current? Five minutes? Yeah. Maybe till we got out of the conference room, right? Because yeah, yeah. the world is not static. It's constantly changing. Right. So what's a better model than trying to dream up? And no one had time to do all that stuff anyway. It felt overwhelming, right? So we just didn't get there many times. What is a better model, I believe, is to have that clear vision that at the midterm, at the horizon, uh, compensating with the challenge theme, know where we're starting and then iterate. Use that tool, that engine to iterate. Right. Um, a couple of people want you to go, uh, move the slide back to the contact page there. So if you can just maybe leave that up so they can, they can see. Okay, great. Um, oh, okay. Good question. I, and this is, this is, I don't know if you feel comfortable answering this, but I think it's a good question. Just the same. Um, are leaders made or formed? It's a really, really good, that's the MBA school question. So after they tell that leader manager hacking their way through the jungle, that's the next thing they talk about, right? It is, it is a thoughty one. And I believe that we all have different um, innate abilities that are given to us and leadership can certainly be learned and practiced. And the more we practice the functions of leadership, the better we get at it. Um, Todd wants to know how mentoring or where mentoring works into all of this. Yeah. Mentoring is, I think that's like maybe next week's webinars. It's a super important topic. So what's in the crosshairs in the TLI process is how to bring new awareness for the leader, work with them to set their vision and their challenge themes for themselves, understand where they're at. And as you know, the instrument of leader is self, dirt, right? And, and whoever asked the question. So what we're really wanting to do is hone that instrument, that instrument of self. And there's no reason why these leaders, and I tell people I'm working with all the time, take this process and for those you're responsible for, apply the same process. It works, you know, you can do this for them and the best way to learn anything like this anyway is to teach it, right? Okay. Uh, Craig wants to know, do you have any comments about accountability? Somebody in leadership or management actually conducting the check stage of PDCA to hold folks accountable to get things done they've signed up to do? Man, what an important topic. What an important question. Again, another webinar. So this is part three, Dirk, so you can book us for that. <laughs> um, accountability is such an important topic. And I, and I will say, certainly, this is a, an important function of whether you put that on the leadership side or the management side. But this is what I will say about accountability for today. The need to enforce accountability goes way down if we spend the time on the front end casting vision about what could be and should be and how people connect to that, about how we all benefit, how they benefit as individuals and how we benefit as a team and as an organization based on whatever it is that we're taking on. We, many times we blow by that stuff and we just kind of hand it down, right? And then expect people to be super jazzed up about it, you know? So the more time we spend building context and casting vision on the front end and involving as much as we can, those constituents, the need for accountability goes way down because people hold themselves accountable. Uh, interesting question here by Tina. Um, why do you think the organizations usually start with, start the transformation journey with an organizational change and spending hours and hours to draw boxes, solid lines, and add tons of dotted lines, just in case we are connected. Vision and mission comes later. Did you catch that? That has a lot of moving pieces, yeah. Um, some, I think we really like tools, right? And vision and mission feels nebulous. So some of us will go to what feels more concrete, right? And what right. feels more concrete is if we can draw a map of something, right? Right. So I, I think it may be just that we kind of t steer away from what we aren't as comfortable with or what feels more fluffy. Okay. Um, 
Hmm. Uh, Joshua wants to know, how do you set up a company for, for constructing healthy feedback between everyone? How do you set up a company for constructing feedback with everyone? There's so many different kinds of feedback. Um, I will, if, since I've got the speaking conch, I'm going to talk about something that I'm excited about right now. So first, feedback comes in many forms, uh, and it doesn't have to be formal. It can be coffee table conversations. I encourage leaders all the time, get off of email. Stop doing, trying to do so much in the email. <laughs> I made that mistake. I was that guy uh, for so long. So get out of the email space and have some conversations, preferably face to face. That's an important part of feedback. In this space, uh, one of the things I think is maybe not an Achilles heel, but an opportunity for the next thing in this TLI process is real time feedback. So feedback happens right in the coaching sessions uh, and it happens as a snapshot with whatever 360 tool that you're using, but there are tools out there and I'm excited about some where leaders are getting real time feedback. So you can set up the competencies and you can set you know, tools up where people can just pick, pick up their phone, they can swipe left, sw swipe right, you can set it up based on the things that you're working on and who you want in your feedback co cohort to be giving you real time feedback over time as you're making these changes. Um, Stefano, what are the suggested steps to move from management and become a leader? I would say focus on that stuff that's on the left. Get a vision, you know, get a vision for where you want to go in your leadership, for your area, your department, of what could be and what should be, right? Bring that to life in a compelling way. If you're not excited about your vision, how can you expect anybody else to be, right? And if you're not excited enough to bleed for your, you know, no one else will ever bleed for your cause more than you will. So get excited about that and get clear on where you're headed and then focus on the people. You can pull in these tools of TLI, this improvement engine or whatever, but focus on that left side of the stuff. It, it, I mean, it's it, functions. It, it, it's it functions sounds like you're things. saying, so you can, it, it sounds like you're saying, do the things to be a leader. Oh, which was, which was th that, like you said, the stuff on the left, or your, or your first, uh, in your first group of slides th there, you had your the stuff on the left. That is the stuff that a leader needs to focus on. So basically okay. focus on those things. And that is, it's a, it's a mindset essentially, right? You nailed it. Yeah. Well said. Uh, hmm. How do you ensure the organization stays focused on the key goals that will make the difference? This is a huge part of the leader's responsibility, right? So vision leaks, uh, this is something, you know, Andy, I mentioned him earlier, Andy Stanley talks about vision leaks. We got to think about vision as like a, a tire with a hole in it, right? And that vision is what's leaking out. So you got to constantly be pumping, pumping it back in. And when you're sick of talking about it, you probably just barely got there, right? Whatever you think is the appropriate amount of communication around key metrics and priorities, it's 10x. 10x whatever you think is enough, it's 10x of that, and then you're starting to get there. So the leaders, you know, leaders are repeaters, and you just have to keep pointing back to it even when you're sick of talking about it. Uh, and I want to, uh, this is a nice spot to throw in this Deming quote that, uh, that Anthony just sending, okay. uh, sent us. Uh, Deming said, it's not enough to do your best. You must first know what to do and then do your best. <laughs> Good point. You know, it, it is, Anthony, I appreciate that comment, but I'll, I'll, I don't say I counter it, but I will also uh, add to that uh, a quote I heard from another guru in this space years and years ago, anything worth doing is worth doing badly for a little while. Yeah. Right, going back to that experimental method. Don't let the fact that you don't know how to do it best keep you from starting. Right, right, because you learn from your failure, you learn from your failures as well. As long as you know that that's what you're that's what you're doing. Exactly. You know, if you're going to experiment, you're going to have some failures and to recognize that you're going to have some failures, but use those as a way to learn. Um, Perfect. Yeah. And that's when you evaluate the experiment or evaluate the experiment, which or experience, which most of us don't take the time to do, we just blow by it. Right. Uh, how important is strategic alignment to this process? 
I got this question the very first time I ever did uh, this a similar topic of this. Uh, it was from actually a client because I'd spent a lot of time during talking about and working with them on strategic alignment. And so I think this leader was like, Gamble, where's this alignment piece? You know, you're not showing up with this. And the truth is to improve an organization, you must have that. It's critical. Otherwise, it's diffusion of effort. Everyone's pulling in different directions. And actually for your leadership, it doesn't have to connect. And I know this is going to be a cage match with some people out there, um, but it doesn't have to connect to organizational strategies because the instrument of leadership is self. And you can do this TLI process in the absence of any connection to organizational strategies. Okay. All right. Um, so that is, uh, that is it. Uh, we're, we're out of time here. If we didn't get to your questions, don't worry. I will forward, uh, I will forward your questions on to, uh, to Keith here so that he can get to you, he can get to you offline. So Keith, uh, again, thanks for a very interesting presentation. <laughs> Enjoyed the, the back and forth that we had there. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for playing along. Thanks for the all opportunity. Right. And thanks to all of you, of course, out there for joining us. Uh, you will be receiving uh, an email about this time tomorrow that will have a link uh, to a recording of this, uh, of this webinar. Uh, it'll come from Quality Digest. I believe it will also have a link to the slide deck as well. I'll verify that here uh, when I get off, the, uh, get off this with, um, uh, with Keith. But I believe it will have both a link to the recording and the slide. So keep an eye open for that email. That is it. So from all of us here at Quality Digest and the MEP National Network, y'all have a great day and we will see you at the next webinar. So long. Take care.